Transliteration and varying degrees of understanding and input. We pray, loving God, that it is by your spirit that we hear a word that is for each of us. We pray that the word that we hear is a word that is helpful, a word that enlightens us to greater meaning, and a word that helps us understand that your love is for all people, and that is the primary purpose here. As we continue on in this worship service, let us understand that we are continually anointed by your spirit. We are together as a people. In that way, we form a body that is able to work for good in our world. Let us continue in this time of worship and prayer, remembering the words of the psalmist who prayed that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together are acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. The juxtaposition of Transgender Day of Remembrance and Reign of Christ Sunday is a dance that requires care. <coughs> First of all, one has to care that there are such occasions at all. While some people think that the Reign of Christ will be a triumphant time when all the world bows down to a ruling Jesus, I do not care about the day that way. To me and what I offer to you is that the reign of Christ is a time when all people are raised up to abundant life. And our rulers have the values of Jesus in their hearts, guiding their sovereignty, even if it is not directly affecting their prayer life. People who are living in the reign of Christ care about the lives of all people, all people killed by war, murdered for whom they are, as well as all people torn apart by oppression and depression, suffering in many and various ways. People who trust in the reign of Christ know that the time is now to work for healing and wholeness for everyone who is hurting. This only scratches the surface. People who believe in the beneficial promises of the reign of Christ care about the plight of the people in ways that make us dream that one day the ancient promise of returning to the pasture of safety and plenty is real. And the possibility of paradise for all is something real to think about and look forward to. This is a time when a transgender day of remembrance may be honored, but there are no new names to be added. People who think about the reign of Christ have a vision to make real. And we know that it is not easy. But when it happens, it's paradise pasture for all of us. Let's look into that. Now, church historians and liturgical season observers remind us that what we call Reign of Christ Sunday started out as Christ the King Sunday. Some may remember that from our growing up. As with many of these Christian recognition days, the purpose is to convey a concept of the substance of our religion. In more recent years, thoughtful people determined that the promise of God is that the divine leader is not meant to be king of the world, but rather the sovereign of our hearts and minds. The aspiration of this Sunday story is about governing and influencing intentions. It's not about establishing a triumphant leader on a physical global throne. And, you know, let me be clear that there are people in pulpits preaching a completely different story than what I'm saying now. This is something I offer to you on our journey together. 
The scholars and researchers tell us that Christ the King Sunday is a relatively new development. It does not have a history of long-held church traditions, such as All Saints Day or Christmas or Easter. Roman Catholic Pope Pius XI brought Christ the King Sunday into his church's liturgical calendar year in 1925. And he was attempting to do several things, but mainly to advance the message of God in Christ over and against that of the political forces moving in the world at that time, particularly by people like Mussolini and Hitler, who were becoming more ensconced in power and spreading their influence wider. A year ago on Reign of Christ Sunday, I reminded us that it is good to remember that our Christian faith heritage and experience did not spring from a nativity of naivete. The great intentions of the beginning stories of our faith are to show Christianity was born to serve people, not lord over them with a dominating power. Our faith was given to be a reconciling relationship with God. It was intended as a co-creative responsibility and not a pretext to be afraid of God and think of God as manipulating us like pawns on a chessboard or playing with us like marionettes. The Christian faith as I that I trust wants the best for people even in their last and worst moments. That's exactly why the Gospel writer would have Jesus turn to the poor fellow beside him as two human beings presented in the most dire circumstances imaginable and incredibly have Jesus say, today you will be in paradise with me. I trust that takes and the reassurance, the trust that that takes and the reassurance that that gives is something I care about a lot. And that is what I hope we can come to understand and embrace together. When there are terrible times and there are good times, and when we are celebrating and when we are hurting, the same love of God is surrounding us as it surrounded Jesus and his crossmates. The pasture and paradise are ours to claim and proclaim. Perhaps it is almost too jarring to have a scene of execution read to us on a day that is meant to be for understanding and celebrating. A year ago at this time, we were re reeling from the horror of the Paris terrorist attacks. This year, we had the devastating Orlando attack and a shocking turnabout for a presidential election. It is hard for many of us to envision that these events, along with the many, many eruptions of violence and situations of personal sadness in our lives, are paving the way to a glorious, promised reign of Christ. But they are, Blanche. <laughs> In a great reality check, it is proper to remember that the reaction of the counties that voted recently is a negative reaction to what they saw happening in the cities. On the one hand, they saw shootings and killings, and on the other hand, they saw the rationalization and normalization of social circumstances that they did not cotton to. Now we will see a normalization of values and actions I thought were behind us. In this recent experience, what we thought was disappearing was doing a flanking maneuver, and the quest for goodness many of us care about is now temporarily derailed. But we cannot stop moving. Amen. Amen. This time of year in 1963, we saw the assassination of our president. And the story goes that when Bobby Kennedy grieved with Jacqueline Kennedy about the loss of the Camelot future, that he thought his brother would bring to the country, the former grieving first lady, the grieving former first lady, encouraged him to read the classics in literature. I presume she gave this advice because when we read the ancient Greeks and even the ancient for us Shakespeare and Dickens, we find that the tensions of humanity are always turning gears and grinding outcomes that please some 
and not others. The measure we have as progressive thinking Christian church people is that justice and compassion are both the goals and the measurements of all our deeds. And the promise we hold is that the pasture awaits and paradise is for all of us. We are going to see on our screens and read in our pages a shift in attitudes. We are going to see the normalization of hurtful words and actions against the hopes and dreams of many people we care about. I speculate in my heart that some persons in our beloved communities will reestablish distrust of people who identify as Christians. Some will condemn Christianity altogether. The essential way that we will be able to dilute the trust of who we are, the dilute the distrust of who we are and what we say is with words and actions of love and justice. Blogger John Pavlovich came up with a list of 12 ways he refuses to be a Christian. One of our UCC pastors shared this on Facebook this week. Don't worry, I'm not going to read them all. <laughs> but I'd be happy to post them or supply this list to folks upon request. Many of the phrases touched on topics I very much relate to, but I was uncomfortable with how negative it sounded to me. Maybe someday I will adapt the list in a more positive manner. I think that in the face of a negative moment, more negativity is useless. An old hymn says, Jesus calls us o'er the tumult, saying, Christian, follow me. That's what I hear now and what I hope we do. Follow Jesus in this dance of life. Follow Jesus in being as caring as we can be. Follow Jesus to the Transgender Day of Remembrance Vigil tonight. Follow Jesus to find food for hungry people and Christmas for less fortunate families. Follow Jesus with my wallet as open as my heart. Follow Jesus with the, intentional, with the intention to be a minister among ministers as we run a new race to bring hope, love, peace, justice, and compassion to everyone we meet. Thanks be to God. Um, Amen. 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 rise as we're able and join together in singing our doxology as you find the words printed in the bulletin. <laughs> saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
as the moon sets its sail to carry you to sleep over the midnight sea. Oh, I will sing you a song no one sang to me. May it keep you good company. You can be anybody. Will be the love you leave me.